Vanshika Rora here, going as the Prime Minister, preferred pronoun she, her, preferred mode of POI by raise of hands. I will not be seeing the chat, so just raise your hand. And with that, starting my speech in three, two, and one. Panel, let's understand firstly what quiet quit quitting means. When we talk, when we're talking about quiet quitting, we are talking about employees working their job, fulfilling whatever role that they have at their job. It just essentially means that I, as an employee, don't want to talk about why a thing should be considered or not in a PPT or in a group meeting. It means just I, that I just do not want to make an extra effort. I do not want to stay after my five to nine job, which means I don't want to stay till 10 because I want to go go back home to my family or I want to go home, go home and have a drink and I want to do whatever I want. It just simply means that I do not want to put that extra effort that other people might be putting because that is just how I want to go ahead and continue with my life. I am still contributing to the organization which I am a part of. I am still Still talking with my uh, peers, I'm still talking with my fellow delegates, with my fellow people that I'm working with. It just does not mean that I am going to put an extra effort, which is go not really going to even help me in the further future. Panel, understand that the employee who is quite quitting is still doing the bare minimum. That bare minimum is characterized as the fact that I am completing all the tasks I am being given at my job. I am being responsible. Uh, responsive i am being uh, accountable to my boss i am still talking to my peers i am still providing guidance to my juniors i am doing my job perfectly i am doing my job the way it should be done the way that i receive my uh, salary and i complete my job that lay that layoff that trade off is still being done i am still completing my job i am still fulfilling my responsibilities i am just not putting that extra effort that other people might be putting which is not necessary which is not being imposed with me on me which is not compulsory for me to continue that organization or for me to receive my one lakh salary with that out of this debate panel let us understand that why people quit and what are the consequences of actually resigning from a job in the current status quo there there can be multiple reasons why people quit a job majority of them are either you have a job in which you are getting more money or you have a job in which you are receiving more satisfaction now panel for the first one to happen opposition have a clear burden to prove to you that if that person instead of quite quitting decides to actually resign that person is necessarily going to have a better paying job with them which is not possible right if opposition does not prove this word into you they do not take this debate secondly panel the point of higher satisfaction which means that that person necessarily wants to have a higher satisfaction in order to completely resign from that job firstly panel again saying that person is already doing the bare minimum and does not want to quit right that is why he is not actually resigning which means he is receiving a sort of satisfaction a sort of catharsis and we will also further prove to you why catharsis is actually on our side of the paradigm instead of theirs now panel moving on to the stakeholders in this debate panel understand that when we talk about stakeholders we are talking about the employee we are talking about the employer we are talking about the company we are also talking about the people who are surrounding that employee right with that coming on to our constructors firstly panel catharsis understand panel that that extra effort which he is not putting in this job that person might receive more catharsis from putting that extra effort into learning something else which can look like learning a new skill which can look like doing another job concept of moonlighting panel which means that all right even though i am doing my nine to five job i might want to have a new startup i might want to get involved in some other thing and which will essentially provide me with, with more catharsis right which means that that person instead of going all in in this job going uh, doing uh, overtimes, doing every single thing in this job, which not, might not even end up being productive for that employee, that person might go ahead and use that extra effort to put it in some other skill, to learning into some other skill or doing something others, learning another, uh, appreciating another hobby of himself, which, pro which will essentially provide him with more catharsis, which will essentially provide him with more satisfaction. A, that benefits the person in terms of improving his skill set. It also benefits the economy me because at large if i decide to go ahead and start a startup then i am also benefiting the economy at large now panel understand that how family is better off on our side of the paradigm and i understand that when i go ahead and do that extra effort in my job which means i go ahead and do overtime i go ahead and do number and number of projects which end up burdening me which end up making me 
exhausted which mentally and physically not i not only i am going to suffer my family is essentially going to suffer as well which means that when i do not put that extra effort and after completing my 9 to 5 job after completing all the tasks i have received from my boss i go to my family i be there for them which means my family is also going to be happy with me they are also going to know that i am there for them which means catharsis in family also increases which means family of the employee is also better off on our side of the paradigm his friends are better off on the our side of the paradigm all the people surrounding him are on better side of the paradigm his productivity is going to increase since he is not putting that extra effort and even if he is putting it he is putting it in a place which is going to help him improve that skill set which directly will impact his job as well because if i am learning a new skill i am going to use that utilize that in my job as well can you understand the point of mental health if that person is going to put all of his efforts in one single thing understand the point of echo chambers but how on their side of the paradigm echo chambers is going to exist because that person is going to be surrounded with nothing but just that one particular job which means he is going to be restricted he is going to be restrained he is not going to be able to learn new skill learn new opportunities have new things enter into him uh, and increase his intellectual ability right which means he is going to be stagnant in his own mind in his own skill set panel understand that that person is right now having a stable job he is earning money he is supporting a family even if he is not supporting a family he is supporting himself right which means if he goes ahead and quits which understand how quitting works in the state school we see layoffs happening we see people being unemployed for years not contributing to the economy the economy shuts down nothing works out panel understand instead of quitting not only that for Uh, by quitting not only that person suffers because now he has no in uh, income or a stable job the company as well suffers right because the process of recruitment is very excess uh, expensive for a company it is very excessive for a uh, ex uh, it is very intensive for the uh, company as well which means that i as a company want to recruit more and more employees after it uh, after such a short short period of time i'm going to exhaust my resources which means panel that it is better for the company as well because they are retaining an employee for a long time that employee is doing his job then that is all i need from that employee right there can be 100 other people who can give me that extra effort and i can be well off understand the example of google panel when i as an employee in google want to start something of my new something of my own a new project google uh, supports its employees in doing that and will understand how all the stakeholders are better on our side of the paradigm we give you better impact and whatever new point that cg is going to come ahead and give you is simply going to be irrelevant to this debate proud to propose all right uh, hello everyone my name is bhanu choudhary uh, i'll be going as the leader of opposition for this debate my pronouns are he him uh i'll be taking any pois after the fifth minute uh sorry after the fourth minute and uh, yeah once i recognize your poi please do not raise your pois again and again i'll uh, take your poi by a raise of hand uh yeah with that said i'd like to start my speech or uh, on the self count of 3 2 one uh primarily if we look at the stakeholders of this debate we see that the most important stakeholders are individuals corporations and the work culture society in general uh now firstly uh, talking about the most important stakeholder that might be in an individual we have to understand that as stated by the government itself layoffs are happening and it is a fast changing world and if a person does not keep up with the uh the requirements that are asked by this fast changing fast changing world and make a lot of developments that person might be laid off in the first place that because that person has damaged their reputation by doing the bare minimum and there might be other people present in a particular company that do more than that so the person who is you know the the first person who would be laid off in that particular company would be the person who quite um, who who did the quite quitting well before and this is why for a person to quite quit in a company could be very very dangerous in this changing fast moving economy as stated by the government now uh, coming on to the next stakeholder we have which is the corporations and uh, by some extension the stakeholder is also the society in general we have to understand that very intuitively productivity is lessened because you're asking a person to do the bare minimum and what that does is create a very toxic culture where a person who might be in a company where everyone else is like not giving their best and just doing their bare minimum if i in a company go on 
to be like okay i will be the revolutionary person i'll bring about change i'll do more than it is asked for me now that person you know would be segregated and be looked down upon and would face uh, some sort of social backlash because that person is essentially trying to gain more support and more popularity or some more sort of favors in a company and it's not you know uh, favorable just okay to assume that that person would be all right in the company since everyone else is just doing the bare minimum and that person wants to be the best and now that person would be secluded out of the group uh, what it does is that no one is now challenging the ideas which are already present since people are not speaking up in meetings as stated by the motion what happens is that the ideas which are being passed by initially are not being challenged for example a company has a very innovative project which comes up there is a meeting someone to decides to not speak up because according to government they want to save some sort of you know mental energy so that they can contribute somewhere else well what happens is that in that particular uh, uh, meeting someone does not speak up and the room for innovation is very severely lessened what happens is that that the that a product which is meant to change the world for the better or any particular reason there is company's loss is that and the world's loss is that in general that there is no ideas being challenged and what this creates is a place that okay now whatever idea i produce is you know not going to be as refined as the idea that would have been produced if a lot of people just wanted a bit of recognition wanted to put in more and more efforts uh, now i have a idea which is you know very unrefined and now if i put that out in the world the chances of it being successful one is very low two even if it succeed then we like end up in a paradigm where we are essentially delivering a very bad product to the people and we could have a better product that already existed because people are quite quitting that is not coming up uh, again once we tie this point back to the work culture point what it does is that again since the work culture is very very hindered if i as a person want to bring more change i want to work hard i want to grow in the corporate sector now i cannot grow as far because we cannot expect one person to change the entire ecosystem of the culture we have to understand that we do not uh, we do not support this glorification of quite quitting as stated by the government and we want to understand that if a person has the luxury of quiet quitting in a particular company that person would and if a person does not have the luxury of quiet quitting and is you know being forced to work excessive hours a day well that is you know terms for legal action and quiet quitting if not possible then it's just not a question if it's not possible then it's not a question anymore uh, coming back to uh, you know the society in general once again uh, now we have a society which is you know just aiming at money before that i'd like to take a poi just just because innovation is not happening in that company because i am not contributing in that company does not mean innovation is not happening in the entire economy because i can still have a startup where i am doing my innovation and making that extra effort in that uh, startup you will have a startup where people are coming up and then quite quitting again because you are supporting glor the glorification of quite quitting what it does is that now one not only the company in which i was working being harmed the company that i will start will also be uh, start to get harmed because again people are starting to quite quit because they want the bare minimum and to expect that if you are not giving your best in a particular company and other people would because you know this world is yours this it doesn't just work that way because you are actually supporting the glorification of quite quitting coming back to again uh, the society in general what it ha what it does is that we have a lot of people who are again since they are not innovating uh, the entire objective of being in a job is to just sustain in the minimum amount of resources which is not really sure that you will be able to sustain those resources for long because as i stated before it is a fast changing world and people can come up, come up and take your job and you would be the first person who's laid off in this particular paradigm if you do not do your best now even if you somehow manage to keep those resources for a very small time you are in a race where you switch where you're switching from company to company not growing very much because you have not contributed much so you're not getting higher appraisals that means that your chance of getting a better promotion is lessened now what it also does is create a rat race for a bare minimum amount of money that okay i was getting x salary five years from now now i might just get x plus two percent of x salary 10 years down the line because now i have not made major contributions i'm just switching from company to company and expecting the company to pay me more sooner or later what will happen is that the companies that are hiring will adapt to the entire procedure and not start to give you hikes since a lot of people have started to quit without giving their very best uh, now what it does in the society is 
again it creates a rat race just for money and there is no innovation the society just essentially becomes a place where all you need is money and that money is not a lot there is not a lot of room for growth because the culture is very toxic and if new people want to come in with their ideas and new people want to come in with more and more efforts it just does not happen because the entire culture is such so if this quiet quitting culture is glorified to the extent where people are just focus on their bare minimum and people and you know people are not being you know uh, given the opportunity to thrive the government might say that we are giving the people opportunity to thrive but the culture would be so toxic that people are not getting the opportunity to thrive what it does is essentially create a society which is so hollow that is focused on the bare minimum amount of money that we are getting and we all know what could be the disadvantages of that where we have a society where people have no choice whatsoever they have to do just the bare minimum and the definition of the bare minimum might change sooner or later because some people might want more work some people might want less work so the bare minimum here is just depending dependent upon the company you are going through which would create a very major havoc in society something very very similar to the socialistic society socialist regimes that were uh, very very success- unsuccessful in their rule and that is why i think that the motion should fall and the opposition will the opening opposition will take this debate uh, proud to oppose uh, hello everyone kinjal here going as uh, deputy prime minister prefer pronoun she her uh, prefer mode of py uh, by raise of hands preferably after the fifth minute okay am i clearly audible yeah yeah you are Okay, thank you. Starting my speech in the cell count of three, two, one. Okay. Uh, panel, first thing that let's make it very clear for the opposition and the entire debate here. What is the binary that exists in this debate? If the person is not quite quitting, what will then the person do is actively resign from the job. The debate is about two options that the person has that is quite quit or actively leave the job in and of itself, have nothing that has again reached the position of zero, something that the position completely forgets what according to them, quite quitting means is underperforming. Panel, the Opposition fails to understand very basic meaning of the motion itself. Let us take them at the best case and still break the case for them. Panel, when a person has two options, completely resign or quite quit. Let us first understand how this uh, entire situation of employment works. You know, Panel, in this world where layoffs are very common, it is essentially true that there are very uh, very little employees that uh, that an employer wishes to keep. This means that the relation between employees and employer is going to be close enough that the employer knows what kind of employees it need, uh, he or she needs. This means that there is going to be some kind of relation that relationship that exists between employee and employer. When a person actively goes and resigns himself from the job, there is no scope of discussion or negotiation that exists between the employee and the employer. Then what then next happens is that whenever the person wishes to go ahead and seek a new job, the kind of references that he or she requires to go ahead and get a new job would be very less because firstly layoffs are happening that means that the likelihood of getting a new job is less but secondly again the uh, the push or the support that he would have got from his old organization is also not there because completely resigning leaving and cutting himself off from the organization panic when a person is you know quite quitting this essentially looks like you know uh, the japanese culture of wearing black badges in the work that means that a person is uh, doing what he was expected to do but in this world where layoffs that opposition itself paints out for us in this world of layoffs where he's expected to go ahead and do something more and over and above his own job this essentially looks like the employer getting and noticing that the employee has certain kinds of problems and he's facing with certain situations that has made him uh, change his behavior in the organization. What it then leads to is discourse and negotiation happening between employee and employer. We tell you why this discourse and negotiation is ex- essentially good for the employee. Two things. First, money. Certainty of money if the employee uh, you know, uh, completely leaves this organization is very less. The opposition will have to prove me how just by actively resigning, the guarantee of uh, me having higher scope of money is high. If, if they tell me I'll be highly able to run my startup panel, I need to understand how um, how well my startup is at this point of time where I'm not able to, you know, completely uh, at this stage, I'm, I am at such stage that a startup is full-fledged and each and every startup is so full-fledged that I can risk that chance of earning more by actively resigning through my job. Secondly, what we provide here panel is catharsis. How this catharsis is more? I mean, imagine if you go ahead and simply resign from your job one sudden day, you 
have nothing but a huge huge uh, risk that you have taken that means that your uh, expectations of performance are even more higher from you having such a big opportunity cost that means that if you do not perform better that is highly likely because this world is very competitive and layoffs are very uh, very common that means that economy is you know already at its very uh, uh, at its uh, at its down point itself that means that uh, the regret that i'll have on leaving that job will also be higher because i've left my old support system that means that existing in the current job itself having my own simple nine to five job earning for my family family's own catharsis is also important for me having that safety net for me is important and then working with my side hustle that can include moonlighting and at the same time negotiating with the employer telling him my problems that sir i actually do not understand the culture that you have maybe the employer can help me try solving the problem or maybe sir i have my own startup maybe that sir can help you you know give funding as google does or he can tell you on your face that okay get lost from our organization and uh, this gives a closure for for a person who is going to leave that organization when a person actively resigns two things that are very symmetric in, in both of the sides he would be left with zero uh, there are high chances that we you know a person uh, who goes ahead and uh, uh, you know does quite quitting there is also high probability similarly to active resignation that he will be left with zero that opposition would try to push on us that means that starting from zero is something that exists on both sides of the paradigm then what we give over and above this zero starting is a backing a support that organization will have to this kind of employer because discourse had happened between the employee and the employer but essentially along with that the employee will have higher sense of backing higher sense of uh, aspirations because he knows that uh, uh, he has had a uh, a uh, kind of uh, support from his employee employer uh, sorry employee as well as friends and maybe his own family because he had done his best till the last point he could have continued with an organization and uh, we need to understand how uh, the entire thing of opposition's case that is or uh, when we support the idea of uh, quite quitting that essentially means that everybody is going to quite quit if the world looks like everybody is going to quite quit innovation would never stop how because if everybody is going to quite quit there would be new ways of innovation that the employee will find for the uh, for the uh, for his organization this can look like maybe handling individual projects this can look like uh, people uh, you know having 9 to 5 jobs itself and then innovating this is even more good in our sort of pattern because now people do not have to work overtime and still can provide the same kind of innovation and economic development to the society innovation is something that is only the case of opposition and we take it over above them just because we provide with the provide the employee an opportunity to work at his own startup at the same time with having the safety net which he very very requires because panel financial safety and money is something without which a person cannot have you know the cannot even climb the maslow's need hierarchy theory yes pui fast 3 2 one okay seeing that and what is then more important for the uh, for our employee in this point of time quite quitting would provide him with an agency to choose what kind of career he then wants how so the person knows that i have you know i have uh, i have not spent my extra hours i do not have the uh, i i do not waste my energy spending those extra hours in overtime not spending those extra hours in researching so that i can contribute in that one ppt that is going hap going to happen in organization because i know if it's not me it would be somebody else who would contribute so innovation in no way is going to stop but along with that i have uh, my own uh, my own startup or maybe my own uh, hobby or maybe my own mental health that is going to to stay intact uh, at its own place what we provide then two things to this employee in his own life first uh, safety security something that is again point of catharsis for this employee but along with that what we provide here to him is point of agency why is this agency very important for this employee because if he actively resigns from the organization he'll be left with a dead end of huge misery because he'll have to have he'll be having very high expectations to perform better but with the safety net of organization being at his back he has the agency to go ahead and take bigger risks with this proud to propose thank you hey everyone this is pranjal singh i'll be going as the deputy leader of opposition for this debate preferred pronouns are he and him uh, I'll take POIs any time after the first minute and before the sixth minute. And in order to raise a POI, please just raise your hand. And uh, I'd like to start my speech on the self count of three, two, one. Right. So in uh, in this and throughout this entire debate, uh, the uh, image that has been clearly painted by the government side is 
basically forcing uh, a person to actually choose between either quiet quitting or resigning we do not understand where exactly it was stated that these are the only two options that are available to the person that uh, you know that is being talked about here you need to understand that there exists a third option which is basically being committed to your job right and also i would just like to point out how this is a case of basically uh, the government side is presuming that all uh, working conditions in which a person is quite, uh, trying to quite quit are either unhealthy where they're forcing people to overwork and they do not understand the concept of a healthy work life balance ex existing in the first place right the okay so first of all let me tackle the point of uh, why resignation is bad according to the government and that is why they support quiet quitting right so the only thing that i have noticed so far is how it is going to be a burden for the family first of all i would like to point Point out that when a person quits in current status quo, we need to understand that there exist things like uh, such as notice periods. It is not an overnight process like how you see in movies that you randomly go up uh, to your employer, you throw a document in your face, and then you announce that I'm quitting. I will not show be showing up to work the next day. That is not how it happens. It takes it is a time consuming process, and at the same time, resigning in this case in in or in the event that you do not wish to actually pursue that job further is better because let's talk about why it is better, right? First of all, it ma maintains professional integrity, right? At this, uh, you need to understand that throughout your entire career, you are going to build up a network of, and you know, you're going to create relationships that may be professional, personal, or somewhere in between. You need to understand that by basically quiet quitting you first of all harming your reputation throughout the uh, 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 throughout society as a whole because society is interconnected whatever uh, and news travels fast right and at the same time you need to understand that uh, how catharsis is actually better in our paradigm than it is in theirs they were talking about uh, how a person that is quiet quitting is still uh, receiving his salary you need to understand that a lot of people actually uh, find their self a sense of self worth and find a sense of pride uh, in you know working and accomplishment you need to understand that when a person is not active actively working a lot of people might actually face depression burnout and dis dissatisfaction because they derive their entire uh, sense of worth between uh, bit from being productive right at the same time you need to understand that how in the government's paradigm the mental health of a person is being severely negatively affected because you need to understand as talked about by the lo in uh, his speech already this is a fast changing corporate world it is uh, there are a lot of uh, layoffs that are happening. So when a person is basically quiet quitting, he needs to understand that he's at the forefront of the people who are going to be laid off first. So what that is happening, what that basically is uh, doing, it's basically going to blur the lines, uh, blur the lines between his personal and professional life. A person that is actually in this situation will always have to watch, uh, watch their backs and protect their own self interest. They will always have to prioritize actually, you know, making it appear that they're working and uh, so that they do not face any risk of actually being laid off from the job, right? You need to understand uh, that basically, uh, like, this is why uh, mental health is better off in our paradigm. Now, coming on to the productivity part, right? You need to understand that first off, when you're talking about productivity, when you're quiet quitting, you cannot uh, reasonably explain to me how that is not going to affect the performance of your organization as a whole. Because when people are actively contributing to a, uh, an organization, you need to understand that whatever the decisions are being made, there are going to be a different points of view from uh, from different people. And if you, people are not actively participating in the conversation, it basically might become a case of monopoly of ideas or the blind leading the blind, which in uh, which in turns will be basically leads to loss of potential uh, potential loss of ideas and basically what the government side is trying to normalize is mediocrity throughout their entire paradigm right you need to understand that how this is going to create a whole uh, negative work environment because uh, you know, whatever actions you yourself take, they're going to actually uh, affect those around you. You need to understand that a point that was made by the government side again and again is how if we wish to pursue a career, a career in, for example, starting our own, uh, you know, our own brand, starting our own startup, you need to understand that if you're quite quitting, you're basically uh, normalizing mediocrity. You need to understand that if other people see you quite quitting and still actually being able to hold your job, that is actually going to encourage other people to do the same. What that is basically going to do, that is going to create an environment of complacency where you're basically resistant to the idea of change as a whole you become entrenched in you know set routines you're promoting habits and at the same time that is basically not only hindering uh, your uh, hindering your productivity and efficiency and at the same time you're also basically encouraging other people to do the same so what's to who's to say that the same thing is not going to happen uh, in the case that you open your own startup right you need to understand at the same time how this is actually going to kill opportunities for personal growth uh, I'll take your PY in a minute. Please uh, stop. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Uh, this is going to kill opportunities for personal growth because, uh, for example, if I am not actively contributing uh, to uh, you know, a company actively, you need to understand how this will be taken note of by my employers and therefore 
uh, not only while you know we'll look at it from two points of view one is basically how this is basically going to lead to a decrease in overall productivity and because of that reduced turnover which in turn will make make it so that the company is not able to provide adequate resource dedicate adequate resources to actually providing better working conditions and better you know incentives to work there for example better salaries and that in turn is going to create a vicious cycle where quiet quitting would thus become the norm and again mediocrity is being promoted right at the same time you need to understand how it is actually harming your own personal reputation as a person because basically uh, if your employer is talking to a third random person which might be a job you wish to pursue or it might be somebody you are wish you wish to actually employ into your company you need to understand that they will be aware of the fact that you are uh, clearly supporting quite quitting and uh, which will basically again normalize the fact that you are okay with the concept of quite quitting as a whole I'll, okay i like to take a py out of order sorry protected time Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right. So uh, basically, uh, what I'm uh, trying to say here is, ki, uh, is that when uh, like uh, how our paradigm is better off than uh, their paradigm in every sense is first of all in our paradigm we're basically promoting uh, you know creation of a healthy work environment where there is a healthy work life balance where there is commitment where there is loyalty uh, to and uh, and a sense of accomplishment uh, towards what you do and uh, basically uh, we i also described in great detail how mental health is better off in our paradigm and at the same time you're basically uh, not normalizing mediocrity or allowing society to further as a whole because there is going to be innovation and in our paradigm what is not happening is the creation of a rat race where people are just uh, uh, either a rat race where people are just trying to quite quit and pursue their own interests and then the same thing happens to them again and again which is basically a domino effect and there is no innovation and which will lead to stagnation in our paradigm what we're basically say uh, basically pro advocating for is the creation of a healthy work-life balance where a person is happy where at the same time person can actually look after his own interests at the same time thank you with that proud to oppose so hello everyone thank you uh, my name is angela pronouns she her uh, bois through voice fourth or fifth minute mark again through voice i will not be able to read the chat Preferably, you could also raise your hand uh, if I if ever I do see. Thank you. So starting my speech in three, two, one, go. So this is how my debate will look like first and foremost. First, I will be re-challenging the frame in which OG was not able to fully mechanize its most valuable and most vulnerable stakeholders. I will then be able to give to you my arguments why quite quitting is a form of silent protest, what are the harms of the status quo, why we are more effective, and lastly, why do we lead to better impacts and why do we lead to good things in the form of legislation. First and foremost, in terms of um, rebutting, um, OG was not able to fully mechanize on its SQ and stakeholders and not able to mechanize on their incentives. Therefore, we now have the burden to reframe. They were quite circular as they circle on the benefit of just having financial safety due to, the, due to security of tenure and some semblance of catharsis, which is mechanized but loses an impact on a macro scale. They go on then to say, say uh, OO then. Uh, goes then to say that quiet culture should not uh, um, quite quitting should not be glorified but in our house we say that it is not glorified but in the, instead supported therefore this is untrue because not everybody wants to quite quit we just want to support them if they opt into such firstly in terms of challenging the frame the status quo here is that the labor market trends with gen z now entering the work workplace so, so there is a shift in workplace dynamics so what does this look like gen z actively takes a stance in things such as unfair working conditions being subject to work overtime despite the pay remaining the same and pretty much goes against what is established due to workplace politics and hierarchies in the status quo there was there was already a mass exodus of workers because of them already quitting so employers find it now hard nowadays to look for workers and now have an incentive to make themselves marketable because almost everyone is self-employed starting a business doing TikTok and stuff and etc so what do employees look like not only gen z they are in now influenced by gen z and say hey this isn't looking good for us i want more time with my family they have an incentive to rally for better workplace conditions since they most likely want to quit from their toxic jobs but worried about the security of tenure they still do their job maintain compliance to company regulation therefore cannot be easily fired 
because of existing labor legislation that aims to protect them. So what does the Gen Z worker look like? They have an inherent interest to quiet with because of the pervading worldview and trending opinion within Gen Z to prioritize individualistic prospects than slaving yourself away to a 9 to 5 job. What are the employer's incentives then? In SQ, they do not have the incentive to raise worker safety nets. They, they uh, raise better worker safety nets. So in terms of better working hours or better living pay. So the pay may be livable or at least above minimum wage. But in reality, not a lot of companies, even MSMEs, care so much about the finer things, just like uh, giving them possibly um, uh, better health care, for example, because they want to retain or improve their profit margins. So what are our arguments then? Why quitting is a form of silent protest? Why is the silent protest relevant in this debate? Why is it necessary? These silent protests in the form of refusing to work overtime are just a form of enforcing your boundaries as a person. Understand that employees do not have the incentive to work overtime unless there is space. So they do not want a life of martyrdom just to advance company goals and perpetuate the idea of family in the workplace. So what does this entail? What are the impacts then? Quiet quitting then favors the act of setting up boundaries and it's good for the employee's mental health as a result as a micro impact. Quite quitting allows for room for things such as better fi uh, time with family and these are impacts already that were mentioned by the OG and impacts that opposition will not be able to claim as they rally for the workplace status quo. So quiet quitting gives way for workplace dynamics to shift for the better due to the presence of this. Note that they, a lot will not uh, be able to do this due to the presence of Gen Z workers now coming into the market, uh, workplace. Note that it is not in our interest to defend and rally for employers and how their businesses are going to crash as labor market conditions and trends should be a higher priority. Uh, because as uh, labor market conditions and trends should be a higher priority. So employers now have an incentive to know the people, the pool of people they will choose from market themselves through better benefits to get more workers. So this is a lot more likely in status quo. What are the harms of the worker status quo? What are the harms of actually quitting? So this was already um, provided by OG. We will, we will uh, better mechanize this. So note that SQ is intrinsically harmful for employees as living conditions are currently bad. Everybody is now more interested in upskilling scaling up and moving up due to life itself getting worse, bad healthcare and housing crisis. So when you quit in SQ, you subject yourself to the dangers of staying unemployed. Understand that a job that you tolerate is able to provide you wages that will keep you alive. It is in the worker's best interest to stay in a job because it will be even harder to stay employed now and finding a job is not as easier. So CEO may say that security of tenure is better achieved with an honorable exit. Note panel that the will, they will eventually lose in terms of impact as the immediate harm of quitting is far, far worse than the harms of still doing your job and just doing enough and not more than that. Note that they will not be able to achieve better work conditions as, um, Supporting the work uh, work condition status quo means to keep things as they are, work yourself to the bone. Therefore, even if you achieve change, this is marginal at best. Why are we more effective as a way to delineate for my OG than at achieving worker conditions and why we better achieve this? To, uh, what a reason why? Um, quite quitting as a form of protest will be addressed by the management. It is in their best interest to understand why this happens. How can they possibly penalize the employee? But However, when they do realize that it is an ongoing trend, they will have to they will have more incentive to urgently solve what is fundamentally wrong with the workplace and why so many people are quite quitting and not as productive as expected. What are the impacts then? This leads to the possibility of discussions among employees, HR being more lenient in terms of understanding. Know that HR is a conduit between employees and owners. So what does this entail? It raises the idea of better workplace conditions, better pay, uh, things just like not having to work um, overtime and not have just like scan pay so why does this lead to good things then why uh why do we achieve better um things in our house firstly we in characterizing this we have better labor legislation as a macro impact how does this found out though when more people opt out into quiet quitting as a trend tying back to the gen z now entering into the workplace the fact of the matter here is that gen z are getting typecasted as lazy bare minimum workers so in reality even if gen z here is just like wanting to prioritize their individuality they're being typecasted as such what does this mean og is not able to answer for the new labor market trends that exist and oo is unable to preempt this impact both opening houses are unable to engage with the impact of having no way to answer for the new generation coming in along with their best interest and their clear incentive to quiet quit. So to prioritize in the individualistic prospects such as upskilling, starting their own business, becoming a TikToker, so on and so forth. And they do as they the trend is there, they do not want to answer to authority. So other employees will eventually see the benefit because nobody wants to slave themselves away. So what policy do we bring forward then? The trend that exists and the fact that so many people along with business analysts are already commenting on this pushes a narrative that there needs to change and it happen it has to happen from top to bottom. So legislation then this looks like workers' unions rally 
rallying for stricter laws, uh, left-wing pro-worker members of Congress bringing this to the House getting passed as law. So impact is higher in magnitude and how many people will be affected and provides better worker realities for not just mid-level uh, management, but for more vulnerable state uh, stakeholders such as minimum wage workers and those in informal sectors such as sweatshops due to the higher standard demanded by law. And with that, proud to uh, oppo uh, propose. I hope I'm audible. Uh, my name is Anj. My name is Anj. I'm the <coughs> member. My pronouns are he and him. For BY, my preference is at the fifth minute mark, please unmute. Make yourself know that you have BY. I will take the BY or not, preferably from opening and if not from closing. I will at least take one POI, so please do engage. Um, I'll be starting my speech <clears throat> in three, two, one. Panel, firstly, note that was a very lack of engagement with POIs from the opening government side, which is uh, inherently it's harder to actually engage with the case uh, you know, overall. Now, let's see what this debate about, right? This debate is mainly structured around the employee as this exists as the most vulnerable stakeholders, as whatever happens is directly results, being good or bad, impacts heavily to the employee. So, only the society which everyone's talking about is a sub impact, and therefore is taking the scope of debate far from it, right? Now, uh, what is this case? We'll bring up to you three uh, uh, many ways about how the stakeholders are actually fucked and how we, it's not going to be good, good for them, right? And we will also show you how quite quitting when it becomes a norm it won't be sustainable and the impact which closing brought out which not be able to uh, see fulfillment and are just wishful thinking right firstly we begin from stagnation right now why do companies want you in the first place companies take you on the base of your resume and look at your either skills and look at your work experience right and i'll come back to work experience later do note uh, when this happens now and therefore, it is for these skills, the companies want you. Why? Because company wants their own growth. As they want their own growth, the value of you as an employee is only as long as you help your company grow. And if that is the case, assume why the company becomes an offer, which I'm going to bring up about this thing, point note this, the team will have a majority of quiet kitter, right? Because a company works on teams. Of course, when you're an individual worker, the company will not value you immediately and they'll leave you because you're not doing your work, right? Because they will give you more work if you're capable of working individually, right? So you're mostly in a team and you're most likely in a team in this team, if majority for quiet kitters, how is people looking for the self-interest, which everybody agrees on? If people are looking at the self-interest, what are people going to do? The smart ones are going to take this advantage of this quiet quitting, do a very little extra work from them people and then grow, right? Now, what happens when these people grow? They get, uh, what do you call They get, uh, improvement roles, they get like a uh more salary and they get what you call put up, up, up in the job position, right? And this makes the entire CG's, uh, say, uh, CG's case uh, destroy because the entire point they bring up is when everyone quite quits, the company has to do something. But here's the thing, right? The smart people want advantage on their side. They will just do a bit work. They will go forward because quite quitting will make the standard of work lower and therefore it is easier, right? And coming back to the point, right? The minor people who do work hard get raised in those, obviously. And now when they do go up, this another coming up, the team is left alone. The team is now left with quite quitters, right? And now one option is laying off, which the uh, opening brought up and now second now coming to the stagnation of skills and we bring up how right how does this work lack of practice how do skill develops and how do skill continue to stay relevant forget there's one thing that like this is forgetting curve and how does the curve work the lesser you practice and the lesser feedback for your work you get the more exponentially your skills fall this leads to one danger of not being able to provide what the company wants and two you're risking yourself not only laying off of the job but complete joblessness why? You have a worse resume because your old job will put a stamp of laziness and that will be irrelevant. So why would you lose a company? Do you have a recommendation letter? No. Right? And shit experience is worse than no experience because the next company sees uh, your old recommendation. And now, even if you say that, oh, you just hide your resume. Now what happens is that you can't choose to put more effort in the next job simply because Firstly, your skills have stagnated and it is worse off than you started, right? Now I'll jump to everybody here, you right? OG, first of all, which oh, lovely was that we do not have two options. You can you can just like is a quit job or quite fit. You can continue to work and put effort, as it will most likely be related to what you want to do, right? Because that's what you actually Came because you went to college, this up to learn this job, and when you got this job, and if you want to develop for another skill, you'll prove how that wouldn't work, right? The effort, uh, now how does this not work on the side? Well, here is how it goes you go to a nine to five job, which OG brings up, and nobody classes that it's a nine to five job, and you do a basic thing, right? You do the bare minimum. So the only time you get is either late at night or bare in the morning early, right? Considering how a decent sleep schedule, because my body called catharsis and mental health has been very worse uh, rest upon, time is even lesser. So neither you grow in your job and neither in your skill, because considering you love that skill so much, you probably wish to get mastery, and usually the mastery is. 
is over th- the 10,000 hours is what you have to usually tell. And thus, even if you magically get three to four hours a day, it'll take you 3,000 plus days to even get mastery to it in your job, in a skill, being a, in a side hustle, which is insanity because the factors, and plus because you do factors like inflation, you need to grow with relative to economy because if your salary will slowly, slowly uh, degrade in value and you have bursts of stuff. And most hobbies require resources as the growing curve grows, as the, when you grow your growth, you, you require more better stuff. Again, need of resources and time is your you also need time to start to retain mental health, and thus uh, uh, that's the no sort of point, right? Now also. Uh, the, what do you call uh, uh, now coming back to a point of uh, mental health? Right? Now, what is actually going to happen in a quite quick job? Also, before we think that, if you really want to like actually do work on a skill, leave your job and work on a skill because you do not have the amount of time to work on a skill. And if you wanted to, you, you clearly have you should have done it from before. And if you're not able to do it anymore, it won't work. You are real quick. Uh, in your paradigm, according to you, then every single employee has to innovate, which means there is going to lead to more chances sorry, of internal no, conflict uh, because sorry, one is innovating uh, more uh, conflict. Uh, it's not audible. I'm sorry, I can't take it with you. Right? Now, n- next, right? Now, how mental health works, right? Humans w- w- want meaning and the meaning vanishes. Why? What you do is you work in this nine to five job, and you're working in this nine to five job. What actually ends up happening is that you're not doing anything during your job, right? And as you're doing nothing during the job because you're doing bad minimum, you're not actually, neither you're growing in skills, neither you're actually, what you call, having any significance in life. And as this is the majority of your life, what actually happens, right? Let's put this aside for a second and bring this again back. I'll, I'll tell you, right? You know, what happens is that imagine these people who get good and uh, what is the peer pressure because you're not great in your job so what happens that some people actually grow in your job you are inherently will be jealous because they're getting a better salary and then you're growing uh, they're growing in the job while you're not doing the work even if you're aware of it you still uh, what will happen is that you might start getting an imposter syndrome that you stay here in this work environment while you're not in the job and you're still getting paid and even uh, uh, even if this, this, this doesn't happen right job is such a significant uh, part of time most time is gone you're not doing anything in your work right so what your life will start looking like is you come you go to your job nine to five you go home, you have barely any time left, even if you do have any time left, and therefore you fall down, right? You, have, you have, don't have, you, what do you, call, you do not have funds to pursue other things because your salary stays stagnating. And as you don't have uh, any, what do you call, your, your salary stays stagnating, you're not able to actually do uh, what do you call, yeah. grow as you already brought up before in your own hobbies. Therefore, it's what is smarter is in our paradigm, if you work hard from the skills you've already gained, if you try to grow in your job and put effort, what happens is that once you get into a position of a job, which is significantly allows you more time because the higher you go, the more benefits you get. These benefits allow you to not only more get more funds, this, uh, and the more time which you get allows you to not only have a slight meaning in your life because you're doing this job but also for a matter of fact have more funds to uh, what you call actually indulge in your hobby or skill or whatever you want to develop and this upskilling only uh, will actually be uh, feasible and more what you call likely to be done then you trying to balance two things while you don't care about one which is the most significant part of your day and having less time to do the other neither having the funds to do the other which will uh, lead to an overall uh, fall right now there is one more thing that exists, right? So this is uh, this is uh, this is a survival cycle, right? Which is very uh, barely brushed upon. Once you what do you call it? once you once you're doing your job, right? Once everybody actually no, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to bring up uh, other logic points, right? Now uh, they bring up a point of echo chambers, and they're back. They said growth would happen, but you say, well, why would you choose a job that lies so far from your aim of skills that you are not able to even do anything, right? It's either you continue this job or leave this job, and if you can't leave the job. Grow in this job, have a better, uh, what do you call, um, uh, uh, in, what do you call, more monetary gain, have more time, do your skills, be happier, thank you, proud to oppose. Okay, <clears throat> starting in three, two, one. Closing opposition has started this debate by saying that in order for you to be happy, you just have to do your job. And this doesn't make sense at all because for you to be happy in the first place is for your job to be really, um, really giving you this kind of satisfaction and kind of like healthy work environment and for you to be progressive and for you to be productive in your work. Now, let's like take down their main cases and like they're of like one li- uh, one liner in this type of debate then. So they said like uh, when there's no, um, when there's like just continuous of process of like quiet quitting, there's like, no mastery of jobs because like um, they're just uh, keep um, quitting. So this is just similar from the um from opening opening case because of how they just pointed out that um just just because you're uh, uh hopping into different kinds of like um different kinds of jobs the uh different kinds of companies therefore you're not improving and that's the reason why this kind quite of quitting will just like uh, further mitigate uh, uh lessen that uh, uh further mitigate that kind of harm right now or like the mental health like declines because you're not doing your, your job. So they pointed out that mental health uh, is declining because you're um, you're just being stagnant, you're just um, not doing anything. 
So we say that this harm is like the worst thing in your um, it's the worst thing already in your site. This is the worst case, right? So um, you're literally um, uh, it's just like literal um knifing on your case because of how your best case is like already bid upon or being harmed by this kind of like um um benefits that you're trying to impose, right? But then let's try to engage in this then. So they say that um we say that then mental health is the worst in opposition because the decline of mental health is already the prerequisite of quiet quitting. There's no exclusive um, benefits on this. Only listing all the harms is uh, just have no significant like uh, impact. So um, you can just like propose that um, just because you're listing all the harms of like quiet quitting doesn't mean that um, quiet quitting is something that you shouldn't support in, in the first place, right? Now on the like just like further clash then, um, CO then assumes that workers have the inherent incentive to even want to do their job. This is very untrue because jobs are not meant to be enjoyable. They're meant to put um, food on the table of your family. Second, CEO was unable to mechanize on its impacts of better skills as something that leads uh, to better benefits. Know that this is not exclusive benefits uh, as CG is already able to provide individualistic pro uh, prospects such as like uh, upskilling outside of work exists and is still better achieved in, by, uh, in our house. Second, okay, before I go, go, POI. Uh, if the primary incentive to do a job is to put food on the table, then why would a person quite quit and not make sure that the food on table is being absolutely kept off by doing their very best? Because their job is not uh, is not capable of putting food uh, food in their table because of how they're already being like um, treated like or exploited due to the like um, low wage that's being um, um, inside to, uh, being given to them. Therefore, quite quitting exists uh, in order to seek better kind of like salaries that are going to provide a uh, better better needs to their family. Right now, second then like um like O O as as a response to O then first. Uh, no, OO never engaged in the paradigm of call. They immediately assume that workers to do the bare minimum because they're just lazy. This is very untrue, and this is a weak response because bare minimum exists in quiet quitting because of the existing issues of the labor market and, and was already provided um, by my first speaker, right? In CG, we best mitigate the harms because we have provided the net positives of quiet quitting. Thirdly, OG missed to characterize the um, cause of quiet um, quitting and how it breaks. So this is like a way for us to actually like delineate from OG. So this characterization is very important because it clarifies the existing factors that affects the outcomes of benefits and harps of quiet quitting. In CG, we feel this crucial characterization by providing a concrete characterization and trajectory as to how quiet quitting provides clear long-term benefits to micro and macro stakeholders. Now, as like to summarize on like just this kind of like domination from OG. Right? So firstly, on where catharsis or solace of unemployed is better achieved. First, uh, we say that OG only like pointed out innovation and conversion of resources to hobbies and um, CBAs, right? Or, or collective bargaining agreements between like employees and um, uh, employers, right? So we say that this is better achieved in CG because we have um, longer benefits by saying that through this kind of like quiet quitting, the government will have this kind of incentive to push for better legislation in the labor market. Therefore, these kind of companies are going to be in, uh, be like hold on this kind of like laws in order to uh, improve their overall environment when it comes to giving more sal or better salaries or better like work environments for the workers. Now, like just like further um, have this kind of comparatives then. So um, in opposition, they talk about like how this kind of like under um, this quiet quitting causes people or companies to have this under to be understaffed, right? Which like exacerbates the low productivity. So like, sure, we agree that this exists, but this means that there's truly something wrong within the workforce. For example, um, Japan's toxic work culture or China's 996, right? In CG, we want to push for increased productivity by providing better incentives that prolongs the benefits felt by uh, the labor market, companies, and economy. So what does like quiet quitting like, um, be uh, a solution or why does it, it, it gives like incentives for the uh, entire workforce as like a silent protest, right? So firstly, we say that um, the reason on why this kind of quite quick, quite quitting um, um, happens is because of how, uh, like, when the uh, when this kind of like um, when when the war has like started, this is like just a result of the um, result of war, right? Because when um, when they're trying to establish reestablish uh, their economy, then they have to work fast. Those countries have to work fast. Therefore. Um, they have to call, uh, it costs then older people to have this kind of mindset that they should be aiming to be unemployed. 
So with like quiet tweeting, we identify on how this uh, can, uh, can be resolved, right? Because we identify the root causes, which enhances the solution for the status quo. Because quiet tweeting makes the government employees improve the labor market into something more sustainable. So the reason what now then on why they quiet quit is because they like um because of how like there's a poor management and poor pay, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Therefore, they want to have this kind of like elevation when it comes to their um overall incentives and benefits. In CG, we try to like um, push for something um we push for something that's uh push for like this quiet quitting because we believe that this is a silent protest to push this kind of like governance to have better legislations that's going to improve their overall like um uh experience or like overall quality of life when it comes to being a worker so we say that through this kind of long-term harm it's going to benefit not only the employees but also the other industries or other stakeholders such as the um employers then uh, we ha we weigh better than OG by, uh, with their like principle of having to reach a uh, better catharsis and or better stories in the long run. So from that propose. Okay. Hello everybody. I'm Sarah the Opquip. My preferred Prajala Prananda Shihar. I'll be taking PI anytime after the fourth minute. Please vocalize your PIs. I will not be looking at the chat. I will start my speech in three, two, and one. Okay, Bannon, here's how uh, the debate has uh, taken shape throughout. Now, here's what we see. Uh, now, what is the debate essentially about? This debate is about uh, where uh, employees and companies in general are better off, whether it is at quite fitting or not, right? What are the harms and benefits of this particular thing? Now, coming to what uh, OG comes and tells us. OG initially comes and tells us that uh, they come and tell us that um all these employees are doing bare minimum effort and then they uh they why do people quit they characterize everything for us and they tell that uh they come come and randomly mention that because of the catharsis again not mechanized and they come and tell me that when all of this happens and people are starting to innovate better they come and randomly assert that economy better they do not prove to me as to how or why economy is better or uh, how their side of the paradigm uh, is going to improve significantly they can give no mech whatsoever so this point does not stand uh, they come and tell me that uh, people uh, do not put extra effort, so they have more time for the family, they're uh, giving more time for the family. They do not tell me again why this is important or relevant to the uh, scope of the debate. They come and tell me that productivity increases somehow because they're focusing more on skill sets. Now, why is this uh, untrue on uh, why is the likelihood of uh, this happening on their side of the paradigm very, very uh, low? One, let's uh panel uh please see that when uh, you are telling someone that you need to do very bare uh, you need to put bare minimum effort into something and then you'll still get the pay for it what are you basically doing is awarding a behavior a certain kind of behavior that is uh even if you're not going to give your best uh you're basically rewarding a mediocrity my a very mediocrity a behavior which uh, leads to mediocrity right now why is this bad overall because one these people now know that this behavior is getting uh, awarded nobody's telling them anything they're getting what is this what does this award look like them getting their salary at the end of the day even after putting bare minimum efforts or not showing any sort of interest in the job itself now what does no, them not showing interest in the job itself look like them trying not trying to uh, improve their skills at all within the job and out of the job, yes, you are. Even to do a nine to five job, a person has to involve his blood, sweat, and tears to do that nine to five job. It is not an easy job. He is not acting mediocrely. He is just not putting that extra effort, which might be utilized in a better manner on our side of the paradigm. Thank you. Uh, the person now is doing nine to five job, but in the nine to five job, they're no putting. Uh, they're not putting any efforts whatsoever to upskill themselves. And you're telling me that this person is then going to upskill themselves outside of their jobs, basically by innovating or in investing in startups and all of that. I tell you why this is wrong. You're telling me you're agreeing that it's a nine to five job and they do not have time. This requires effort too, right? Now, uh, 
these people have very less time out of these jobs to go and do something else or upskill themselves so upskilling on your side of the paradigm does not exist whereas on our side of the paradigm whether is it whether it is by staying in the job and trying to improve your skills within the job so that you get better and you get promotions why is there an incentive to get better on our side of the paradigm and uh, gain skills is because you are going to uh, get promotions right this is why you will do it or even if we consider the fact that you're trying to resign even when that happens again you have an incentive and more time to upskill yourself why do you have an incentive because now you do not have a job now you know that you need to do something in life and you will work on whatever interests you right now uh why um Okay, moving on. They also come out and tell me that uh, relationship, uh, this employer-employer relationship exists on their side. And if you go and uh, uh, talk out to the employer that about your problems that you're facing, they somehow resolve it. That's not how the corporate world works. If you go and tell your HR or your manager that this is uh, what I'm trying to do, this is the startup I'm trying to uh, start, most of them are the likelihood of them trying to help you after you've shown a kind of behavior but you're not helping them either is very very low right now uh, they're telling they somehow tell me that innovation would never st stop on the side of the paradigm they don't show how why uh moving on uh cg comes out and tells me that gen z is coming into the workplace we need to create a better a work environment individualistic prosperity is better on their side of the paradigm is what they're telling we have all, already proven to you why this is untrue in my member speech when they tell you that you do not have time to upskill yourself you do not have the incentive to upskill yourself these people are going to uh these people are going to look at each other and uh these people later these people are going to look at each other and you know uh, when there is this mediocritic behavior when nobody is working that uh this leads to uh a mediocre workplace where again how is this benefiting some other people who are not uh quite putting is uh when this happens a certain smart bunch of people will work uh, will put some amount of extra effort and improve now how uh is this going to affect the other people right it's going to uh affect the other people's mental health why because they see their peers improving in life by doing better off by uh having uh very well by having to put a little more effort than they are putting and hence why are they seeing that these, these no, people's I lives are better off uh hence why the mental health on your side will deteriorate whether whereas on our side of the paradigm where we are going with a uh we're, we're going with a a kind of mindset where you're getting awarded for the work that you're doing then what does that lead to better mental health why is the mental health better because now you're getting uh, these appreciation from not only your peers but also your seniors now what does this essentially do when this happens you are uh, motivated to do better why when this motivation comes into picture you are uh, you are going to upskill yourself now what does this do basically gives you happiness and fulfillment that is what we're looking at here right the uh, the employees happiness and fulfillment is better off on our side of the paradigm in my members uh, what uh, then does one uh, what then happens is that when you do doing your job properly you're constantly stimulated there's a lack of meaningless in your life again there's personal fulfillment in your life because you're giving some kind of meaning to your life by you know upskilling yourself you're getting appreciation for the same thing uh on our side of the paradigm uh sustainability is uh we've already uh, in my member speech we've proven to you uh how this on our side of the paradigm mental health is better there's no lack of meaningless uh we've also given how the sustainability better uh, and how in general the employee is better off on our side of the paradigm because on our side of the paradigm they have an incentive to work on their skills and build upon themselves their happiness and fulfillment on our side of the paradigm uh and in general also the workplace in our side of the paradigm is better off with that i would like to uh end my speech thank you proud of you.